All right, yeah, we'll be in touch. Yeah, we'll go. go. I'll go. I'll happen. go Heidelberg Road. Yeah, cool. Oh, you're listening to the debrief here with Dave O'Neill and with the uh, comedy legend Adam Rosenbachs, ladies and gentlemen. Legend. Well, how long have you been doing comedy? Mate, I've been doing comedy. Uh, you almost be 20 years, wouldn't you? Uh, I'll be 19 years in January, so it's been 18 and yeah, so that's 10 months. Have you ever been called a legend on you know by at a gig by the person introducing you or? Uh, no, I've been I'm good friends with a lot of people. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine, um, but I've never been. Oh uh, yeah, legend. Yeah, I've had yeah. legend occasionally. I've had veteran now. So. Veteran, fuck. Yeah, no, that's hurtful. Legend, that's mean, right. legend means old, doesn't it? Legend means old. Yeah. Been around, but then again, you could say Josh Thomas is a comedy legend, couldn't you? Yeah. Hannah Gatsby, comedy legend. Yeah. So but I guess when you're in trying, you wouldn't say that because. No, nah, it's true. Because a legend is just someone who's been around for fifteen for, plus years, or maybe legend is like was on telly. Yeah, it's done well. Had a good career twelve years ago. Yeah. And now is doing Rosanna Golf me. Club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, you just described me. What's going on? <laughs> we just did the great Rosanna Golf Club, which was hilarious. So they're all... There's an older crowd. Uh, very old. Very old. Uh, they're sort of older than... A bit my age and a bit older. No, much older than you. Fuck. Go I know. On. I said, you know, people in my age group, and this guy laughed and went, thank you. I went, oh, yeah, I'll put you in my age group. Yeah. We... They wanted to start at seven. We started at, what, about quarter to eight? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I got on about, I don't know, ten past eight, maybe... There are a lot of people stifling yawns, so we were like, we were keeping them way up. Like, they would have had dinner about 5.30. Yeah, they, well, yeah, normally, yeah, yeah, you'd have dinner at 6, probably. Yeah. But they, yeah, they, some of them would play golf, but some of them hadn't, it's just like a social night for Man, them. And it doesn't matter, they'd be tired anyway. Yeah, they'd be wanted to catch a bit of Midsummer Murders and fall asleep. <laughs> that's, that's what goes yeah. on. Yeah. Mate, I'd love to do that. That's weird being a comic, because we, you choose this career in your 20s, you go, oh, it's so cool, isn't it? get to go out and get free drinks and meet people. And That's a really good point. I never forgot and, about and, and then, I never thought about that. Yeah, and then now I'm 52. I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah, like, and people are like, oh, you know, we can't pay that much. We can give you free booze. They're like, mate, I've got a fucking driver. Yeah, yeah, and I'll say, oh, we'll feed you. We'll feed you. Yeah. Yeah, I've got food at home. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. in a shared house anymore. Yeah, they don't need to feed me. I mean, I still eat it. Yeah, you had dinner there tonight. I did. How was it? Uh, it was okay. It was Sort uh, of pub food. Golf club food. Bistro food, mate. Bistro. bistro. Yeah, was, you're right. It's more bistro. Chicken on top of risotto. Oh, yeah, Which no is thanks. just like, why, why are you no combining thanks. two things? Just do a risotto or do chicken. That's my dad once said, soggy rice risotto is. Doesn't just like it. Not at all. My dad, who's probably from the similar era, maybe. Tom. Yeah. I met, met your dad. Yeah. You can meet him quite a few times. Tom, because Tom hangs out with a guy called Hank. Yeah. He's, He's next door neighbour. Yeah, they, they go, Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Classic, you know. They've said it probably about 8,000 times in their life, oh, I that's reckon. Their, that's how they hit on women ladies yeah. <laughs> at golf clubs. Tom Hanks. Um, when Dad first went to a Chinese restaurant, he would always order the mixed grill. Mixed grill? Yeah, yeah. Just because, you know, he didn't want any of their... Oh, really? Weird their food. food. So he'd go, give me the mixed grill. I don't even know. Uh, can you still get mixed grills anywhere? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever um, had one. At pubs. Pubs. Yeah, really out of suburban pubs. A uh, traditional sort of pubs you get a mixed grill, yeah, yeah, but not many places these days. No. So what do you get? Like a sausage, a chop? And a bit of steak. It's and a risol, some... maybe a risol. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dad loves a mixed grill. My dad, Is there any offal thrown in there? No, nah, not these days. Maybe in the old days. Yeah. Mixed grill. Of, yeah. Oh, yeah, a bit of lamb's brain. A bit of lamb's brain. Oh, they yeah. love it awful. Have you ever eaten? Like, yeah, brain unfortunately. Or yeah, unfortunately, yeah, because of growing up in the 70s, yeah. yeah. We, we had On brain. The rations. On rations. On the rations, <laughs> after the war. Yeah. Um, no, we definitely had awful. Yeah, which was just horrific. Really? Horrific. Well, Dave Thornton was telling me how his wife, well, maybe he doesn't even stand up, yeah. feeds feeds the kid brains because it's got the most nutrition or something in it. So I think that's why they used to eat it. We used to have lamb no, it's brains. it's not because it's fucking cheap. Oh, yeah, back in the days yeah, in the 70s. Yeah, they didn't give a shit about your development. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, geez, Dave's a bit simple. We, Should we uh, give him brains? brains. No, fuck we had a lot of chops. Basically. Oh, mate. We had so many chops. Chops were the staple. And it was almost like uh, you could pick what night it was by the food. So yeah, yeah, skinny, mum, mum sort of had it. Yeah. Did you have like a chicken chow? I mean, a chow. Oh, you kaisi min. Kaisi min. Yeah, that's a weird. It was just cabbage. Oh, and, I love it. Cabbage and mince. I made it the other night. I still, I still make. I still, I started making it again. And my, I took it to mum and dad's, and mum's like, "Oh yeah, we used to love this. We used to love this stuff." Bit of curry powder. Curry powder, but in in the seventies they put chicken noodle soup in there. Oh, so it's his stock. 
Yeah, that's your stock. But these days, it's just chicken. Chicken. Do you do a lot of cooking? Do you? Yeah, yeah, I love to cook. You love to cook. I do love to cook. Mate, you got Master Chef, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, um, I don't know. Like phrases of shit like they go just blanch something again. Yeah, think, yeah, I think yeah. I know what, what is that I think I know what the blanch is but they need to do a comedian's master chef because I think they did it somewhere maybe in England really uh, yeah yeah Jeff Green went on he was telling me yeah yeah maybe he was on celebrity master chef because there are some guys like you can cook I can cook but there's guys like Husey who never ever cook and would just be hilarious on those shows but does he never cook because he can aff- like he must have he must have cooked before he was famous. Nah, like really. now, you know, he's buying houses on the block just because yeah. it comes he, with food. I, th- I think his wife does a little cooking. So, yeah, yeah. yeah he... he um, but someone like Kate Lambrook is a very good cook. Yes. Chrissy Swan, very good cook. I've tasted their food. It's very good, Adam. But yeah. someone like Mick Malloy, he wouldn't cook. Oh, mate, nah, I've, yeah. I've been to Mickey's place and you'd be lucky to find... There's usually like a tub of butter and maybe a couple of Kraft singles in the fridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, then yeah, just yeah. like six slabs. Yeah, yeah. So, so you sh- know, when I'm around there, it's not like I ever want food, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't want... Oh, God. But I have had some toast late at night at Mickey's place. Mix, so, you mix. know, that makes you happy. I love the fact that he bought a house um, in, in in a big building, and then they open up a bar downstairs. Yeah. And I know you've been in that bar with him. Yeah. And it's like cheers, isn't it? He knows all their names. He walks oh, mate. In. Yeah, he knows the menu. <laughs> <laughs> he just knows it back to front. And as his brother said to him, there's also a gym in your building. Do you realise that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a bar, mate. It's not just a bar. Man, he doesn't need more than that. Now, I'm trying to think, oh, you know what? I often talk about this on podcasts, how I, when I first met someone. Oh, yeah. I first met you at Triple R. Yes, I was actually, because uh, I knew I was doing the potty. I was thinking about it today, and I remember... You were working at Full Frontal at the time, so you were doing... Oh, so yeah, Booko yeah, on Triple R? Yeah, Booko, yeah. And I must yeah. have been doing fill-ins at Triple R at that time, so it's yeah. been about 97, you, you, were all, you were also... Were you sort of volunteering or working there or something, or just hanging around? Or? Just hanging around. I used to be in production. Production with Archie? Yes. Yeah. So I used to make the ads and... That's uh, right. And I was a panel operator for the Crud Boys. That's right. Tony Moakler and Julian Schiller. And you had you were fat and you had dreadlocks. Well, I wasn't fat. I was fatter <laughs> um, than I am now. now oh, you were fat. You were... Yeah, yeah you, I you, did have dreadlocks. I had long hair. Yeah, yeah, but you weren't as big as I am, but you were big-ish. Yes, I was solid. You were solid, they say. Although people still say to me now, they're like, how are you, big fella? I'm like, fuck, am I, am I You're a big not fella? big at all. No, nah, I wouldn't nah, have you're not that. a big fella. Um, God, I wonder if I've t- taken the wrong way here in these back streets of... That's all right, mate. ...bloody lover plenty. <laughs> <laughs> mate, what's going on with that? I should, we, did we, no one mentioned that. Rosanna Golf Club's actually in lower plenty. What the fuck's going on there? Yeah, no, it was a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Grimmel. Okay. There is a very good fish and chip shop just right there. Of Grimble course, Street. you would know. You'd I be know. Like, you'd be like the app. This, this, I'm going to drive past, shop. see if it's still there. Yeah. This this fish and chip shop, I'm, uh, on Good Friday, I, I remember saying, when my kids were really little, this fish and chip shop, Banyul Fish and Chippy, Chippery, yeah. run by Greeks, right? Oh, yeah. And I said to my wife, there's The original this, fish and chip people. Yeah, the original fish and chip people. And I said, there's this great fish and chip shop I've read about in the age. She's like, oh, let's just get in the car. We'll go and grab some. She goes, where is it? And I go, oh, it's in Watsonia. Or... Anyway, we ended up driving around here. Yeah. And eventually found it by Googling. I go in there, <laughs> and the kids are staying by this stage. Good Friday, right? Yeah. I go, all right, I'll get the uh, flake. We'll get the blah, blah, the blah, blah. The woman goes, all right, that's great. There's an hour and a half wait. <laughs> oh, you can't. That's why you don't get Good Friday. That's just silly. No, Good Friday, do not do it. No. Nah, that's when do you not meet do and just regret it. Regret it. Yeah, well, I'm a Catholic, so who cares? Well, I am, but I only feel guilt because I know my mum would... Oh yeah, you're Catholic. disappointed in me, but, uh... but but so Triple R, yeah, oh, yes. yeah. So you came in, and I was working with Vic Plume. Vic very, Plume, Mark a tool, a tool man, show. yes, uh, Alan Parks. Um, yes. And you came in, and you you had said to us, yeah, I, I, I want to be a comedian. I want to be a comedian. And I remember uh, saying to you, this must have been further down the track. Can I uh, submit some sketches to you? Because you were working, I think oh, you were yeah. head writer at Full Front. Uh, possibly me and Toolman were, yeah. And you were like, just leave me in my pigeonhole. <laughs> And it was before the internet, probably. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. And uh, I never did. And I always... Yeah, I regretted yeah. that for two or three years when I hadn't broken into TV yet. And I was like, fuck, I missed my chance. Like, it was... You said... Yeah, because we... I would I would often help people get jobs on that yeah, show. Yeah, mate. Everyone worked on that show. Because we needed writers. Yeah. We needed writers. And they would say, who's good? Who's out there? Who's good? And so we had people like Hallier worked on it. Husey worked on it. Uh, Brad Oaks, uh, everyone, everyone uh, every comic, through there, didn't they? Uh, Christine Basil was working on it. There's a lot of comics working on it. I remember um, around the same time, I think um, Duff worked on it. Backburner was on with Peter Burner. Yes, and um, the head writer was Rod, Rod Contock. And I submitted yeah. a script 
and the feedback that came back was uh, there were too many jokes in it. Oh. And I was like, well, firstly, that's fucked because what do you yeah. what do you want? Yeah. And then um, I didn't feel bad because I rejected it, and I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. But as long like they didn't say it was shit, they just said it was yeah, too yeah. many jokes, which for satire. You need one joke every, you know, four or five episodes. Apparently. So, yeah, you, didn't need, to, yeah, you I, didn't need to pump it full of them. I, work on I the, say that, I'm working on a satire show now. Yeah, you work on Charlie Pickering's show. The weekly. Which is like the new back burner. Yeah. Um, that's a compliment. Um, <laughs> um, Peter Burner's a very funny man. I saw him the other day, but back burner, I worked on the pilot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there was this big power struggle over who was going to be the head writer, because... Peter Burner wanted a guy called Graham Pugh, who was an old school comic from Sydney. Okay. And so he flew him down. And then Rod Quantock, the ABC wanted Rod Quantock. Yeah. And so Peter Burner said, All right, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to have a meeting at Graham's flat. Graham's flat in St. Kilda. I still remember it. And Rod's, Rod's not going to come, all right, because we're going we're gonna to have a meeting without oh. Rod. But Rod found out about it. <laughs> so he didn't just go to his flat, did he? Yes. <laughs> we're sitting around in this flat with Graham Pugh, who wore a beret. He was always wearing a beret. I don't know why. He's he's a comedy writer. And so Peter's there and uh, he's like, okay, we've got to talk about the comedy show. And suddenly the the door bursts (laughs) open and Rod Rod comes bounding in like a, you know, he's great, right? He's like a court jester. And he goes, try and have a meeting without me, are you boys? (laughs) It's like... Oh, anyway, I, le- I left because they offered... Pete Burnett was meant to do the Comedy Festival Roadshow, and yeah. so I replaced him on the Roadshow. So I went, oh, I'm going. This is doing my head in, this uh, show. So You didn't do it? No, I didn't. I never worked on that... Uh... On Backburner? No. Did you work on Backburner? Uh, no, no, no. I never got a gig there. My first um, TV writing show was for Russell Gilbert. Um, Russell oh Gilbert my Live. God, when he yes. took over, they got rid of Hey Hey in 99, and then they yeah. gave Gilbo a Tonight Show, replacing Hey Hey on Saturday nights... Uh, Six thirty on Channel Nine, and that was my first ever gig. So, so that was on the sketch show. Uh, no, the sketch show came after. After oh. uh, Channel Nine, went, we don't really. Oh no, no, there was a sketch show that was on while Hey Hey was on. That's right. That was produced by um, Kevin Blonde. Yeah, and Daryl Daryl Summers' company. company. Yeah, right. Um, was it Summers Carol? Yeah. Put it together, and then a couple of years later, after that, got axed. Uh, Gilbo had his own show, and then he had a sketch show after that. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, um, it was funny. I remember that show. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I remember getting in trouble the first time my big mouth got me into trouble. Was they were talking about doing a segment? They'd had a segment that had tanked. I can't remember what it was. And they said, "Oh, why don't we try doing that?" And I said, "No, why don't we try doing something funny?" Oh, and the yeah, executive yeah, producer. Yeah. Uh, I front footed it on the Monday. So that happened on the Saturday night when we were doing in rehearsals. Yeah. And you know, I copped a big glare from him. And yeah, on the right. Monday morning I went into him and front footed and said, Look, I'm sorry I was out of line and he just fucking ripped me apart. Oh really? Oh. He's like, You're damn right, you're fucking out of line and just <laughs> tore me apart. And I was like, Yeah, okay. I'm very lucky to be keeping my job right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah. That's that's very true. Yeah, because they don't like that's the thing about having a uh, writer's room it's interesting because you watch a show like 30 Rock where they have that writer's room yeah and it's pretty spot on because there was always the guys who went to uni yep the two guys the, the, the sort of the inter- intelligent guys yes. Melbourne uni guys Smart there was ones. always one woman yep one or two women but hardly any and then there'd always be a few stand-ups yeah that always trying to put themselves forward on sketches and stuff like that absolutely so yeah that's that's when you watch that you go it's actually true writer's rooms are like that although they're not as do you find writers' rooms aren't as collaborative? Oh, these days. These days, like um, yeah. you know, I don't know what it was like you did pre-computer, but now everyone just seems to be working on you know their own not, stuff. Yeah, their own stuff, or yeah, you just because you're on the internet all day and you're just looking at your own shit and trying. To yeah, stuff. I suppose. See, you're doing a different kind of show. Full frontal, we definitely we'd have a meeting at the start of the day, and there'd yeah. be about fifteen of people at least, and then you'd go off and right, work sketches. with someone. But you, oh, okay. you, t- you tend to work with someone. But also, you tend to um, gravitate to someone you like. Yes. And so you stick, yes. stick with them. Yeah. So when I worked on Full Frontal, I'd work with um, Marco Tool, yep. who's still in the business. He's a good friend of ours. He's also the producer of Black Comedy and stuff. Yes. Tool Man. I worked with Matt Cameron. Oh, who, yeah. Matt Cameron is now, he wrote that Sunshine series. He wrote um, that thing with Guy Pierce. He writes all that. He's moved into Memento. Dry. Memento. <laughs> yeah, he's got to explain to me how, yeah. the, uh, how that worked, that movie. Um, Jack Irish. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's moved into drama. He's a very good drama writer. And who else did I write with? Oh, Glenn Robbins wrote with a lot. Yeah. 
Sean McAuliffe? McAuliffe wrote with a bit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But McAuliffe wrote with Gary McCaffrey, who he still writes with now. Yeah. Geez, those two oh, they basically mean, write the whole uh, yeah, what's McAuliffe it? show. Yeah, the, um, yeah, I wrote on the first uh, couples of sketch series that McAuliffe did. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you were in it, weren't you? I was in it a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I was a warm-up man, too. Ah. So they'd use me a bit. Is that the McAuliffe program? McAuliffe program. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, that was good fun. Um how long did you do warm-up for? Oh, I just fell on the McAuliffe program. Did you enjoy it? No. Yeah. <laughs> Have you done warm-up? Oh, so I did warm-up when I was writing for Spicks and Specs. Oh, I you did, did warm-up warm up a bit, that's right. But it wasn't like a normal show, you know. I'd come in, have a bit of a chat, that's then right. Adam Hills would come out, and then basically you'd he film would do a, a lot. Show. He would do a lot of the warm-up. Yeah, yeah, because he yeah, he's he, very he good it. at it. Yeah, he loves it. Um, and also, because it, was, it wasn't a live show, there's no geeing people up for, you know... <sighs> Ad breaks and all that sort of shit. Yeah, and I I hate it. It is not my personality to be warm and fuzzy. Yeah, Sean just wanted. She didn't want a standard warm up man, so he just wanted yeah, someone okay. different. So I, I said, oh look, I'll do it. And then I ended up doing a few other shows, which I did Denise show once, which is horrible. Yeah, and um, anything that's during the day is oh, just man. killer because the people that go to TV shows during the day are not really yeah uh, into comedy or life. It's it's a hard job. My hat goes off to the. Uh, the no, the good ones are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. you get pigeonholed because you're really good at it. Yeah. And you're so rare. That's right. And the money comes in, and you're like, "Fuck, I got to keep doing this." Yeah, I keep doing warm up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, how many shows have you written on now? Then you've been written on stacks of shows. Uh, yeah, but I had a few long term ones. Like before the game was. Oh, you did before the game. Twelve years. Specs and Specs. I was on for six years, I think. Yeah, right. I didn't do like the last two of the Adam Hills run. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What else? Oh, do you do the front bar? I do write for the front bar at the moment, which is great fun. Yeah, it's um, a good show. Big boy and Sam Pang. Um, yeah, yeah, that's um, a that's... very, very popular sketch show known as uh, Open Slather. Ah, uh, we that was last time we worked together. Yeah, we wrote on that show, and it was that was a fun writers room. I don't, yeah, that was fun. I don't know what happened to that show. What, what? Uh, uh, season two is <laughs> coming up soon, so it's going to be a cracker. Oh fucking hell! We're in Ivanhoe, and the road is closed. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm going. You know, I went on teaching rounds at Ivanhoe Grammar in 1985. How long did you teach for? No, I never taught, but you had, oh, I, I finished you the course, yeah. and I taught in that school right there. I parked my car, I'm getting flashbacks. Yeah. Okay. To um. Well, they've just finished a school concert. I saw them packing up. Uh, oh really? Better lighting rig than we use tonight. Oh man, they got this school's got so much money. Yeah. I went to grammar. It's, it's just... You went to a public school, didn't you? Yeah, of course. You went to Strathmore High. I did. You went I to did. Mitchum High. And uh, Glenn Robbins was a teacher there. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, and he, I think, finished the year before I got there. I, we, didn't yeah. cross, we never crossed paths. Well, he went to that school. He went then, to that school. And then yeah. he went back and taught. Yeah. There's no way I'd return to Mitchum High. I would just lose control of the class. Oh, fuck. It'd be Could a you nightmare. imagine teaching, like, teaching year nines? Year nine yeah, boys? I, I did primary school teaching, and that was hard enough. Oh, Fuck. I just, I just think back to uh, if I had to teach myself, I'd just be like, yeah. I just then I go, you're a cunt. Yeah. What yeah. is wrong with you? Because we used to. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. And, I mean, everyone does it. You try and break your teacher. Yeah, I know. Then I look. Yeah, we made a guy cry once. It was just awful. You made a dude. Well, cry. he was on the edge anyway. I think this guy. Well, it wasn't yeah, me, right. but the class made him. Yeah, yeah. He stood for a seat in the Liberal Party. I always remember that. So we always hated him for that. So. Because we're very labour orientated. Yeah. <laughs> and the other reason you would have known that is because your parents would have told you. Yeah, yeah. I he, can't imagine you guys are <laughs> in the young liberals. Up with the local candidates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. because yeah, he wasn't standing in our area. He was standing in another area. And he had a little moustache and a little beard. He looked like a magician, so we called him Zim Zalabim. <laughs> <laughs> that was his nickname. Zim, Z- Zim Zalabim. If you're a teacher, you cannot have anything physically wrong oh, with no. you. Or, or your name. Or your name. Yeah. So when I did teaching, they called me Orange Peel because of O'Neill. That oh, was okay. the best I could come up with. That's shit ass. Yeah, but I finished teaching when I was 20 and went, I'm never doing this ever. Yeah. It's good to do that shit, though, to know that you don't want to do it. Oh, yeah, because I walk into my kids' classes now and go, oh, God, I remember this. Oh, I could do it now easily, but not easily, but I could do it much better than I could have done. Yeah. Because I've done almost 30 years of stand-up, so um, hey. it's a confidence trick. It's all confidence. It is, isn't it? Yeah, teaching's all... But they do a great job at them. They do a great job. What did you study? Did you study anything? Or? No, I, I, for, when I got out of school, I um, worked at Pentax Cameras. Oh, my God. Don't, cameras don't really exist anymore. No. I, I was a storeman. So I used to pack boxes and... Um, wow. 
So you get an order in and you... You know who else it was used to be a storeman who's been on this show? Who's that? Tony Martin. Oh, really? Yeah, he was a storeman in a disposal store. He used to drive a forklift. Oh, wow. No, I never got to... Oh, we used to get those sort of forkies where you stand behind it and walk yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, we used to stand on it and ride with it. But uh, fuck that, man. I, I wanted to go on a forklift. You know, there's always little things. Yeah. When you're younger, there's little... Um, I don't know, points in life that you always wanted to do. I always wanted to be able to go through a staff-only door. Yeah. <laughs> it was just one of those things, you're like, fuck, I wish I could do that. And I got to do it. So, you know, living the yeah, dream. living the dream. But was that the classic job that you took uh, after school, thinking you'll go to uni? This yes. is like a filling kind of job? Yeah, yeah. yeah and I yeah. kind of drifted from... I worked at Toys R Us for a oh little bit. Oh, my God. And fucking hated it. On the floor? On the shop yeah, floor? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and come Christmas, mate. Like, again, same reason I don't do warm-up. I don't like people. Yeah, so to be there when people are whinging about their, you know, oh, we can't find this little trike for our son. It's like, oh, fuck off. Yeah, it's yeah, not my tough. Problem. I worked at a factory straight after school, uh, a tile factory where they made tiles. And, oh, um, yeah, I know, it was brutal. Fuck, there were some uh, grim jobs there. I know, I know. But we got the good job because um, Robert uh, was Serbian and the foreman was Serbian. Yeah. So, anyway, the good job wasn't that good. <laughs> um, and so, but there was a guy, Jeffrey, who also got a job there and... Um, me and Robert passed HSC, and so we went to uni, but Jeffrey failed. And he goes, we go, what are you going to do? He goes, oh, I'm just going to keep working here. <laughs> so he just kept working in the factory. Fuck. Hey, I just kept working here. we be fine. we good. we be okay. I remember once, uh, must have been about like 12 or 13, and like my best friend in year seven it must have been, his next-door neighbours needed some kids to do some fucking labouring. I don't even know what the place did, right? But there were these... Piles of Hessian squares. Yeah, yeah. We had to pull material out of them. It was oh kind of poking out. It was the most menial job. And at first smoko, we just went out, like kicked the footy around and just ran ourselves ragged. So by 11.30, we were cooked. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember this old guy just standing there and he goes, I've been watching you blokes for half an hour. You haven't done anything, you little fucks. <laughs> and I'm like, Jesus. And I went home and told my brother... And he goes, why didn't you say to him, what have you been doing when you're watching this for half an hour? You fucking yeah, yeah, exactly. Fuck. That's the best thing ever. You can say that to people. <laughs> what a shit job. Oh, mate. I think we did it for like two days and got about 10 bucks. Did you do a paper round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We did the local papers. Oh, yeah, there's a, they're the, the ones you could put down the... Uh, the drains. Yeah. Oh, man. We came out once and mum's like, there's a man here to see you. <laughs> Like the, he was a distribution manager for the another one in Gazette. Yeah, yep, yep. and he's like, "Boys, people aren't getting their papers. They complaints." <laughs> it's like, yeah. I see us regular paper boys would look down upon you. Oh, so you did the Herald Sun or the I Age? Did the Herald, I did the Herald Sun and the Age. You do both. So Saturdays was a double because you had to go back and get the Saturday. Ages. Oh my god! But the best so did thing you about, do the early mornings? Yeah, yeah. I was up at uh, oh. five. 30, I reckon? No, I don't know if you've noticed you've been replaced by an Indian guy on a Cortina. <laughs> <laughs> right, mate, he's, those plastic wrapping machines, we didn't have those. No, no, no. And also, he's... Did, I mean, when I first moved into my area, yeah. at least six other people got the paper. Now, I reckon I'm the only one who still gets it. That gets yeah, it delivered. amazing. Yeah, you just, you just don't need it. The best thing about the Saturday age was... Because um, a lot of uh, front porches are wood. So you'd go up... Because you couldn't just put it in a letterbox and it wouldn't fit. But you go up and do like the umpire, the centre bounce of the grand final. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so you bump your head and just slam it down as hard as you could. And you'd wake up fucking dogs, everything. And uh, that was kind of, you know. Did you get, um, I remember mum used to make a big deal out of this. Did you get a good present at the end of the year from yes, people? Yes, yes. And you'd yeah. always leave cards to say thank you and stuff. Oh, did you? Yeah, you kind of, that's how it worked. It was... I still leave beer out for the Garbos. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so we got recycling. Oh, yeah. I had a horrific experience where I didn't want to put them on the bins because... Some would take them. Some would take them, but also... Oh, no, they, we still have garbos that run around. So it's not just a machine. They, they actually run around. Yeah, yeah. And... and um, but still, if I saw a... Oh, no, if I saw a six-pack out, I'd leave it. So I came... My wife's like, there's the garbos, there's the garbos. So I, had to, I grabbed the six-pack with yeah. the card on it. I go running out of the front, and it's the fucking green waste guys uh. who are just sta- <laughs> staring at me. <laughs> like, you got a six-pack of... Yeah, I just kept running. 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, drag them down the park. <laughs> hey, see you later, guys. And, and um, yeah, oh, man. So, but, yeah, I, but you know what? You know why I do it? I leave out six crown lagers for the recycling guys. They're yep. empty. That's how they like it. And uh, <laughs> uh, I leave full ones for the recycling guys and the garbage guys. Yeah. And they remember and they fucking pick up anything. Like, I can leave a dead body. They just pick it up. Yeah, he gave us six crown lagers, that guy. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good tip because um, I don't reckon hardly anyone gives them nah, stuff these days. Nah, I wouldn't think days. of it anymore. Did you, um, did you ever get chased by a dog when you were... Um... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember get 
fucking... Mate, I got bit by Hughie's dog the other day. Barkley? No, Barkley went over to his house yeah. and the bloody dog jumped up and went for my hand. But because I know Barkley is a bit of a terror, I pulled it up and he, his sort of bite didn't land, but it just grazed my leg on the way down. You know, that kind of... <laughs> but yeah, anyway, you know, I, I we got... Oh yeah, I was. I didn't have a dog. We had cats as kids, so I was scared of dogs. Oh, I remember getting. I heard, and this is over like a full on. It would be an eight foot fence, a pit bull scale it. Oh my god! I heard this noise, and then I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And then it just fucking came over, and just started chasing me. And I like, I was screaming. I was riding down the street on my mongoose, just fucking the mongoose screaming. I'm trying to remember what I had. You, you, mongoose were top of the line BMX. So my mongoose, uh, my so we grew up in Pascoe South, so Strathmore area, mm. and my brother was driving towards Strathmore Heights and out the back of Essendon Airport. So there's a road there. It wasn't just like in a paddock. Yeah. But someone had dumped a mongoose. What? There, and it clearly had been stolen and someone yeah, yeah. left it there. So we took it to Kobe Police Station, which was miles away and no one was ever going to claim it claim it there so we just left it there for three months and went back and got it oh. and it was legitimately <laughs> ours instead of just because that's serial number one yeah yeah yeah, 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 back, yeah. Yes. Or also you didn't know whether someone had put like the remember the blue light yes it was right in the blue oh, texture and the, inf, the yeah. ultraviolet would show up the serial numbers yeah you'd yeah. write it on your VCR yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah family yeah. VCR yeah and occasionally your neighbourhood watch a cop would turn up with one of those pens yes yeah he'll be there with the blue pen yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sergeant uh, Rogers there with the yeah, yeah. blue pin. Um, yeah, no, I, I, can't, I had a talker, I think. I don't know a talker. Oh, a talker. There was talker. Red lines? Remember red lines? Red lines, I remember. There was um, PK Ripper. Oh, PK Ripper. And then a guy at school had, uh, I think he used to race him. He had a Diamondback. A Diamondback, and yeah. I remember being really impressed by that. We were down at Ringwood Lake once, jumping into the lake, as you know, yeah. young fuckheads do. It's a good way to ruin your bike. Also, <laughs> we, we did it at Blackburn Lake, which is a lot deeper, and someone lost a bike. Oh, really? Yeah, it just went down, and it's just like, oh, dude. So, <laughs> That's the, the best. That's the, what you want, though. Yeah, I know. Someone lost a lake. But these pros turned up. I can't remember his name. These guys turned up. Yeah. With And they had, like, proper BMX, proper... We had all, you oh, know... Yeah, yeah. We were That's at that stage where... Yeah, and like, also, yeah. someone probably had a drag star with BMX handlebars on it. You know, yeah, that kind yeah. of... And these dudes turned up to you, and they just... They set up their own professional jump. Really? Oh, they were amazing. They were doing tricks and all sorts of shit. Maybe it was when I was... We used to live in Preston. We went down to Edwards Lake in Reservoir. Oh, yeah. And this is when remote control boats... Yeah, 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 that would be. And this yeah. guy, uh, he must have hit a piece of wood and the boat had capsized, but it hadn't sunk yet. And um, so they were like 15, 16, and I was there. I must have been about seven or eight. And I said to my brother, which is what everyone was thinking, but I said it out loud, I was like, I hope it sinks. <laughs> and the guy's fucking turned on me. He's like, don't fucking say that. I'm like, oh, mate, everyone, everyone around us is thinking it. Yeah. You're playing it. Your first comedy bit. Yeah. The, um... I did. Oh so. man! Yeah, I always wanted to get one of those boats, but I always uh, want to get one of those planes. But you, you know, know what? what? They were very expensive back then. These days, you can go to J Car. My kids have got them. You can buy remote control tanks and buggies for forty bucks. Really? Oh, they're so cheap. They're so cheap these days. What about remote control choppers? Like that's just a fucking death wish, isn't it? Like, oh, you fucking take people's eyes out. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, drones are big. Kids have drones these days. Yeah. How much is a drone? Ah, oh, you can get one for ten bucks. But they're no good. Okay. They're no good. So what is that? So how is it no good? It's just... Cheap. And so my son got one in a show bag, put it yeah, that way. Okay. Show bag was 10 bucks. Oh, it's got a drone in it. Fly it around. Yeah. Four minutes later, it's broke. <laughs> like, this is broken because they're just so cheap. You've got to spend a bit of money for a good drone. Yeah. Not that I'm an expert, but... Uh, so I went to Iraq earlier this year for uh, gigs for the Australian Defence Force. Mate, whatever. You're in ISIS. Whatever. You yeah. had a bit of a midlife crisis. Thought you were going... Well, I thought Syria just seemed nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Fuck, what was that like? Good stand-up scene there. Uh, so I'd, I've been to Afghanistan before, but the reason I bring up the drones is uh, when you're on the base, so this is in Baghdad, and it's all flat around Baghdad, so you can't really... There's no mountains and stuff around it, so you can't really tell where you are. You just sort of, you know, you know where it is. But um, they have this big blimp that sits... Because you're on an airbase. And they have this blimp that sits above the airbase. And that keeps an eye on the perimeter and, um, you know... Yeah. So, they can, so no one can breach it and they know what's going on. But there's a lot of storms in Baghdad. And as soon as a storm comes in, they have to pull the blimp down. Because if it gets hit by electricity, it's got like four million bucks worth of cameras and stuff on it. Oh, Jesus. And when they pull it down, that's when uh, ISIS 
send up drones with like hand grenades and bombs and shit attached to it and fly it over the base. And so they have a thing called shelter in place. So an alarm will go off and it'll be like shelter in place so you stay in your room, stay basically undercover so it can't happen. So anyway, I was in the shower. I don't hear anything, right? I don't hear these sirens going off and shit. So I just walk out, this towel wrapped around me and this dude's like full, uh, you know. Combat gear. Yeah, full combat gear. And they're like, uh, buddy, you might want to get undercover. And I'm just walking around like it's fucking Dramana, Dramana Caravan Park. <laughs> so there's still troops there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they, they were training up, uh, when I was there, they were training up the Iraqi army to take back Mosul. Yeah, right. Which so, they've done now. Yes, yes. So that was that was in May when I was there. Jesus. Um, and what are the gigs like? I mean, the gigs are great. I mean, they're um, they're staffed of entertainment. You know, they they basically work eight to ten hours a day, and then there's fuck all to do because you can't leave the base. So they just watch movies, play video games, hang out, go to the gym, and then you got you know another seven or eight hours to kill. So who did you do with a country singer, or often they sing yes, with? Yeah, so I was with a country singer called Jade Holland, who's from Townsville, and I went to Afghanistan with her a couple of years ago. And then another band called uh, Lonesome Train, who are kind of like a rockabilly cover band, who are yeah, right. really good fun, just put on a great show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But when I was in Afghanistan a few years ago, we were in Kabul, and in Kabul there's mountains around the Air Force Base that you're on, so you get like this, just this presence that you're being watched the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. say, uh, you know, the Taliban fire rockets in from the mountains all the time. But the thing about it is, is they will set up a rocket and then have to leave because they know where it's come from. And if they're people that are hanging around it, they'll just get lit up by a Black Hawk. Yeah, right. So they put it down so they can aim it, but they can't get like the trajectory right. So a lot of times it'll just fly over or fall short or whatever. And you've got eight seconds. So an alarm will go off and you've got eight seconds to either get on the ground or get into a bomb shelter. So we I'd done my spot, uh, did like a half an hour spot. Very, 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 very funny. Mate, um, I'm sure. And the band was playing, and I'm standing up the back, and the music just cuts out, and I thought, oh, I must be an electricity thing. And then people just start screaming, rocket attack. And everyone hit the deck. Fuck. And I'm lying on the ground. And, you know, like, when you shit yourself, sometimes you're like, oh, I thought I was going to, uh, you know, I thought I was going to die. Yeah. This is lying on the ground thinking, this is it. I'm fucking, I'm dead. I brought myself over to, like, was just chastising myself, just going, you're such an idiot. You yeah, brought yourself yeah, to a yeah, war zone yeah. and you're going to fucking die because of it. And then, um, yeah, and then didn't hear but, it land or whatever, so we just got back up and they finished off the gig. Jesus Christ. But for them, you know, it happens daily. Like, yeah. they're so relaxed about it. They're like, oh, you'd have to be unlucky to get by a rocket, though. You're like, fuck. Yeah, yeah, Would yeah. I? Yeah, but it in could Kabul, happen. Mate. Hey, yeah. yeah, you're in Kabul. Yeah, my brother, he works for Red Cross, and he, he, he's been to Kabul, and so he just lies in bed at night and can hear explosions going off when he was there. Yeah, you, you're very aware of... Uh, where you are when we went we did a gig at the NATO headquarters which is in the middle of Kabul uh, like in the city yeah and right so they chopped us in at like 3 in the morning and we <laughs> land on this uh, field next to the air, to the base that we were going to be on yeah right and like these dudes come out and cover the helicopter they're like alright they say so we're in the chopper and they're like see that gate over there they go fucking bolt for that gate so you're Jesus running across, Christ. you're wearing a helmet, yeah, you've got yeah. combat gear, and you're just running for this gate, and there's dudes, like, covering you, looking in, you know, looking for any snipers or anything. That are... Oh, my God. Good gigs, though. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Actually, that one was a terrible one. I'm in the middle of a gig, and Black Hawk helicopters are landing on that base. Oh, yeah, so you can't hear anything. <laughs> nah. Good one. So if you've ever been heckled by a, uh, a Black Hawk, you know how to handle shit. But sometimes someone said they did some of those army gigs and they were all Americans and they, you couldn't sw- you couldn't do anything rude oh, or swear or... Did the Nelson twins tell you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, on yeah. that gig with them. So we got banned oh. from uh, an Air Force base in the Middle East because <laughs> they were really Christian. And they were like, no Jesus jokes, uh, no swearing. And we just fucking went to town. Yeah. And they were filthy on us afterwards. It's like 45 degrees... Um, you know, it's like 100% humidity on this base we're on. And they're worried about us swearing. It's like, you guys are dropping bombs on people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, oh, and, yeah, yeah. And did the crowd love it? No. Oh, really? No, they didn't. <laughs> like, the Aussies were kind of into it, but the Americans were just, because um, there's like a pool on this base, and they were just doing their own thing. We were just this uh, distraction. Oh, like a background noise. Yeah, kind of. yeah. And the funniest thing, like, it was so hot. And so I'm in a t-shirt and shorts, and the Nelson twins are in their full track suit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but they're great, those gigs. Are they're you really going back? Uh, I don't I don't have anything band, uh, planned. They wanted me to go. Uh, they're doing a gig that kind of ran 
over Christmas, New Year's, but it was 21 days and it's it's too long. Like, you just... Oh, man, that's three weeks. Go that's insane. no good. Yeah. Like, yeah. T- usually the, the trips you take are 10 days. You go to the Australian base, which is in the Middle East, and then you fly from there. Um, yeah. It's too long. You just yeah, go, yeah. You just go nuts. I you know, was... I say that. They're there for eight, ten months a year, but... Yeah, but they signed up for it, mate. Yeah. We left a lot of good men behind, you know? <laughs> It's good food though. Fuck the American oh, bases. Yeah, the American bases. You'd love it, Dave. The, the food there is oh. disgusting. Oh, hamburgers. Oh, fucking, oh hamburgers, chips. fried chicken, oh. chips, everything. They have asked me about going, but I've, I always say, no, I've got kids and stuff. I can't. No, yeah, I can't go. It's good to be anywhere. Good to be anywhere. Yeah. Great to be anywhere without the kids. Yeah. Good fun times. Look, you're listening to the debrief with uh, special guests Anna Rosenbachs. Oh, look at all the hipsters in the hot weather. Oh, look at them, aren't they cute? Being out at Edinburgh Gardens. Yeah, they've been drinking. Yeah, must be hard to uh, tightrope walk in the dark. <laughs> okay, the dollarshaveclub.com delivers high quality razors right to your home for less than what you'd normally pay. I tell you what, it's great. They send it to you in a little box. There's everything you need there's a blade, there's cream, there's even a shaving brush. Look, here's your chance to see why over 3 million members love the Dollar Shave Club. Right now, you get your first month of the club for as little as $5. Half that is just a few bucks a month. Dollar Shave Club is so confident in the quality and the value of all their products, there's no long-term commitment or any hidden fees. There's no reason not to join. Get yours at thedollarshaveclub.com slash debrief. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash debrief. We're back on the debrief with a special guest, Adam Rosenbachs. Adam, I've got some questions that I ask everyone. Okay. The deb- sure. Debrief questions. Okay. What went well tonight and why? Uh, I thought the relationship stuff went really well because they were older. So you they kind were a bit of, older. Um, if you go too young, yeah, they're just they're like, just uh, like they're going, what the fuck are you talking it's about? Like so, a, it's like a kid talking to us. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But relationship stuff could go on, a, you know, that could work. Yeah, they love that. And if you, the swearing didn't go so well. Oh, yeah, that's, what's, well, that's the next question. What didn't go well? Yeah, I'd say the swearing. Um, and then when I was talking about hipsters and stuff, and you can kind of see them. Not quite sure what a hipster was. Like yeah. I think, I think to people who don't live amongst hipsters, it's a very broad term. Yeah. Whereas you know, I can tell you different types of hipsters, but they're but he just prob- like, they probably think you're a hipster. Well, yeah, exactly. See, this exactly. Is thing. Anyone yeah. from the inner north is a hipster. Yeah, I've been called a hipster. I was like, um, yeah, 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 I got you know, yeah. Someone wrote a le- oh, uh, letter to the green guy. <laughs> that's not so surprised. You nearly puffed your tobacco <laughs> out of your pipe. <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I nearly took my bespoke axe back to the <laughs> back to the scout hall that I've been renovating. <laughs> Yeah, someone wrote a letter to the green guy and said I was one of the young hipsters ruining the ABC. Oh, God. I know. I loved it. That's it's good to be really called young good. when you're 52. Yeah, no, I love that. Awesome. Um, the other thing that didn't go very well tonight was the fucking microphone. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the other question is what... Ob- oh, look, there's a possum. What, um, you know, were there any obstacles that got in the way? Organisational obstacles. And I'd say the microphone. The microphone. Your, your intro sentence kept cutting out yes. I was just standing up the back going well this can't be fucking good um, there's nothing worse than when they go yeah yeah we've got, we got the PA covered and then they run it through like a a speaker system that came out of a 1994 yeah. Toyota Corolla that's plugged into the roof and you're like yeah. this is not going to be fun but then yeah we swapped mics in the break and it was much better yeah with yeah, the one that okay. didn't work yeah I don't know how that came good I don't, I don't know maybe it was warming up but there's nothing worse than when it's something simple like that. And then you lose confidence in that it's going to yeah. work. So you go, this is going to happen to me in a punchline. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. And I've got, you know, thousands of punchlines, so I just don't need that. Do you ever do this? Go sit on the uh, nature strip in the middle of the road Yeah, so drink? people sit. This is in, where are we? Carlton. North Carlton. Yeah. And people sit in the median strip in the middle of the street, which I just don't understand. Just go to a, like, we're, think, near, we're near Princess Park and we're near Edinburgh Gardens. Like, choose one. Look, we used to do it when I lived in a share house. I think it's about getting attention. Ah, oh, you want people to look at yeah, you? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. well, well, girls. You want girls to come yeah, over and join right. you. For, when I, I went to Argentina and on the side, of, you know, the grass on the side of the freeway, yeah. people would have picnics there. It's <laughs> like, fucking hell, there's got to be got to be a park in Argentina somewhere <laughs> in Buenos Aires. You bloody hope so. Yeah. Maybe not. Oh, um, there's lots of greenery. Yeah, how can we... How can we Final question: How can we do better next time? Uh, Get the actually, mic sorted. Yeah, apart from the microphone, I actually thought they were pretty good. Um, yeah. If you could tell them perhaps beforehand to stifle their yawns. Oh yeah, there were people yawning. Yeah. Yeah, as we said before, <laughs> just just give them a give them a heads up. Maybe you know, slip well, a bit. Don't, of, don't yawn so much. Slip a bit of uh, Red Bull into the drinks or something. I think like they'd probably fucking pop a pacemaker if you did that. 
I think, you know, they'd all paid for the night, so they're all happy to be there. Yes. So this, this is sort of an annual event there. Yeah, and that, that was the other thing Probably you noticed is, um, like, I was talking about stuff, and you kind of go, this is like a generation removed from you. I'm, I'm like your son. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're yeah, thinking, yeah. you know, you know you're um, not the same. Like, I was talking about, you know, when you're pashing a girl and you're trying to undo her bra, and you're like, these people have not pashed. <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, yeah. For, they're not they're, doing anything like that. They've had a peck, mate. Peck yes, on the yes, exactly. They might hold hands when they're at the supermarket, but yeah, maybe. they're not doing anything like that. Oh, man. Uh, well, good on you, Adam. And Adam, of course, can be found on Twitter. He's a very good tweeter. Yes. Um, what's your handle, man? At a Rosenbach's R-O-Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, he's heard on radio. And he's, got, of course, got a podcast in the footy season. Yeah, it's called Junk Time. If you're into your footy, check it out. Junk Time. Yeah. It's very popular. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me.